In this video, we go over the two different ways of representing the solubility of a substance. And these are the molar solubility and the solubility product. These are two different ways of representing solubility, but there is some overlap. And so in the next part of this video, we'll go over the ways of converting between solubility product KSP and the molar solubility X. You may also see molar solubility represented as C or S in some sources. So it can be X, C, or S, but it's always the same principle. The molar solubility says that, it says how much of the substance can you add before the solution is saturated. And so here we have the molar solubility of A, X of A, and that's basically asking how much of this compound can you add per liter of solvent and before it saturates. And so if this was NaCl, it would be the number of moles of NaCl that you could put into a liter of water before it became a completely saturated solution and began to precipitate. The KSP, the solubility product, is uh, equilibrium. It's a K value. And so remember with equilibria, we look at the concentration of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the concentration of the reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. And remember, these concentrations are the equilibrium concentrations when they've reached equilibrium. For something like sodium chloride, NaCl, you're putting in solid sodium chloride into pure liquid water. And so you don't have anything in the denominator because you don't include solids or pure liquids in any K value, any equilibrium constant. And so what you're left with is the concentration of Na raised to the first power times the concentration of Cl minus raised to the first power. And that will be your Ksp value. It's the equilibrium expression of the equation solid NaCl plus liquid water turns into aqueous Na plus plus aqueous Cl minus. And so all that you're doing is you have the Na plus and the Cl minus, and that's what's represented in your Ksp. And so now we'll go into an example of this and we'll show how to move between molar solubility and solubility product and solve for one when you're given the other. Quite frequently, you'll encounter questions that really test your knowledge of solubility measurements by asking you to convert from molar solubility to solubility product or the other way around. And the way that you do this is actually quite straightforward. Just remember that molar solubility asks how much of the initial compound you can put in before it becomes saturated, whereas solubility product is about how much of the dissolved pieces will be there at equilibrium. And so here we have a question. Find the molar solubility of silver carbonate, which is Ag2CO3, which has a known Ksp value of 8.2 times 10 to the negative 12 at 25 degrees Celsius, which is a fairly standard temperature you'll encounter. The way that you look at molar solubility is how many moles of silver carbonate can you put in per liter of solution in order to saturate it. The point where if you were to add any more of this silver carbonate, you would start to have the silver carbonate precipitate because it would no longer be able to dissolve. It would be as dissolved as it possibly can. Now, remember that the dissociation of silver carbonate is Ag2CO3, the solid, plus H2O liquid, turns into two Ag plus ions, which are aqueous, and a carbonate ion, CO3, two minus, which is also aqueous. And so we represent the Ksp of that as Ag plus squared, the concentration of dissolved silver ions at equilibrium, times the concentration of carbonate ions at equilibrium. And this one is raised to the first power because the stoichiometry, it's one of these versus two for the silver ions. And the way that you can convert between KSP and molar, molar solubility is to realize that molar solubility is telling you about a saturated solution just as this one is. And molar solubility, what we can draw from that is that for every silver carbonate molecule that we put into our solution, what's going to happen is we're going to yield two silver ions and one 
carbonate ion. And so every time we put in one mole of these per liter, we're going to get two moles of the silver ions and one mole of the carbonate ions. And so the, amount, the number of moles per liter of this that we put in, that will be equal to the number of carbonate ions we have, and it will be half of the number of silver ions that we have, because for every mole of silver carbonate we put in, we get two moles of silver ions. And so we can represent the KSP as silver ions squared times the concentration or the molarity of carbonate ions to the first power. And remember that for every mole per liter of silver carbonate that we put in, we'll end up getting two silver ions. And so our concentration will be 2x. And for every mole per liter of silver carbonate that we put in, we'll end up getting only one carbonate ion. So our carbonate ion will be represented by just x. And so we can represent KSP using x because of that realization that for every mole per liter that you put in of this, you'll end up getting two Ag pluses and one CO3, two minus. And so here we have the equation that represents KSP in terms of molar solubility. And when we solve for that, 2x squared, that number will be four times x squared, and then we'll just multiply that by the x here, and what we'll end up with is four x cubed. So you can say KSP equals 4x cubed. And then all that we need to do is just plug in the known KSP value, which is 8.2 times 10 to the negative 12. And we know that that's equal to 4 times the molar solubility cubed. And if you're doing this on the MCAT, they probably won't make you solve for this because you don't have a calculator available at your disposal. If you're doing this in a general chemistry class or some exam where you do have a calculator, then you'll have to do the algebra and solve for this. You'll just divide that by four, and then you'll take the cubed root of whatever that product is. But ultimately, what you'll end up with is that x equals 1.27 times 10 to the negative four. And x is the molar solubility. And so now you can see that when you realize that molar solubility tells you approximately the molarity of products that you'll get, or in a case where it's something with two silver ions that are made, the molar solubility doubled tells you the number of silver ions that you have in the saturated product. And because of that, now we can convert between the two. If they give you KSP, solve it a lot like this. If you, they give you molar solubility and ask you to find KSP, you would still solve it this way, but you'd have a known molar solubility for these ones, and the KSP would be the unknown. But ultimately, if you can make this connection, then you're good to go. If it's something like NaCl, then you're not going to have to double that, because remember, one mole, of, one mole of NaCl dissociates into one mole of sodium and one mole of chloride, and so you won't have to use this complicated 2x squared number. But the bottom line is that if you realize how to find a KSP, what a KSP represents, and that the moles per liter, which is the unit that molar solubility uses, it's not too hard to move from molar solubility over to KSP by substituting in x values for these two parts of the solubility product.